Shri Srimad, Srila Bhaktivedanta Narayan Goswami Maharaj, to all of our disciplic succession and all the assembled devotees. Srila Gurudev has ordered me to share with you the very beautiful story of the Fal Vikrani, or the fruit seller. One of the essences of this story, of this history, in Krishna's pastimes, is the benefit of Sadhu Sangha. The fruit seller was living in Mathura, and of course, everyone living in Krishna's village of Vrindavan are all great sadhus. So people would come from Vrindavan to Mathura for selling or buying or just traveling. And in this way, from some of the travelers, she heard about the very wonderful son of Jashoda and Nanda Baba. How he was so charming and he would carry his father's slippers on his head as a servant or sometimes he would try to carry something and he wouldn't be able to carry it because it was too heavy for him. She would hear about the very sweet pastimes of Krishna and about his beauty. So she became attracted to have his darshan. So she went to Vrindavan to sell her fruits there. And she went by the area near Nanda Bhavan, the palace of Nanda Maharaj, and she would call out, Fallo, Fallo, take fruits from me, take fruits, take fruits. And she would try every day to see Krishna. But sometimes he was sleeping, sometimes he was out playing with his friends, and sometimes he was lying in the lap of Mother Yasoda and drinking her breast milk. So every time she tried, he was nowhere to be seen. So the nature of bhakti is that the more one puts his consciousness into it, the more one's thirst for it grows. So now, the next day, she was determined. If I don't get Krishna's darshan today, I'm not going back to Mathura. She was so determined. Srila Gurudev said, do or die. He said she was fixed in her vow and we should be similarly fixed. My vow is that I attain Krishna Prem. So I'm going to chant my rounds every day. I'm going to read the books of my Gurudev and Guru Parampara every day, which gradually give me relish for Krishna Prem. So she had that strong determination. I once in my great pride asked Gurudev some years ago, when will you give me my spiritual body? So Gurudev said, well that's the only thing you want. So she had that strong determination. So she again went near the area of Nanda Bhavan, but now she was so much in trance that she forgot her fruits and she began calling out, Govinda lo, Damodar lo, Madhava lo, take Govinda, take Damodar, take Madhava, forgetful totally of who she was and what her duty was there. So from early in the morning till noon, she went around trying to sell her Damodar, Govinda, and Madhava. Finally, she became somewhat tired and sat down at the doorway of Nanda Bhavan. Krishna, seeing her great do-or-die determination, took some small grains from the storehouse, some corn grains, some wheat grains, some other grains, and began carrying it. You can imagine, he was two years old, two and a half years old, quite naked, wearing only a chain with golden bells jingling and tinkling, a sound which charmed even himself. And he took those grains, which you can imagine, a little two-year-old baby's hands, fingers all separated. By the time he reached the fruit cellar, 
All the grains but two or three had fallen from his hands. So what did he have to offer? So he went to the fruit seller and said, Give me some fruits, give me some fruits. He had very greedy eyes, Gurudev said. Why? Because he was greedy for her beautiful heart that only wanted him. And it took the form of greed for the fruits. He saw the golden bananas, the mangoes, the grapes. Give me some fruits. And she, seeing him in that beautiful, charming way, she became totally enchanted. And she said, I may give you some fruits if you sit on my lap and you call me mother. So this was a great problem for Krishna. Here he is, the prince, the baby son of the king. And if anybody saw me, sees me, calling this low-class uh, saleswoman mother, they'll all laugh at me. So he looked around to see if anybody was looking. Coast was clear. So he very quickly jumped on her lap. Mother, give me some fruit. And jumped right off. This was enough to totally capture her heart. Her heart was no longer with her. And she gave, she started giving him fruits. First Krishna held out his hands, but his hands were so tiny. So now he held his arms into his chest and fit all the mangoes and other fruits that he could. And then, oh, just as she had realized the only way to find, to meet with Govinda, she realized is Nam Sankirtan. And that's how she began in her full trance chanting his names. Just as when Krishna left Rasalila, the gopis realized the only way that we're going to get Krishna's darshan now is by weeping Nam Sankirtan. So she also took that method. So now her heart was totally lost. Krishna left her as soon as he got the fruit and began dancing off to Mother Yasoda. At which time he put the fruits in her veil. She said, oh Krishna, where have you gotten these fruits? She immediately started distributing them to all the gopis. And although hundreds of gopis came, to get those fruits, they were never finished. They were unlimited. Mahaprasade Govinde Nama Brahmani Vaishnave. Oh Mahaprasad, you're not different from Radha Govinda. You're not different from the holy name, which can create and destroy millions of universes in a moment, as Gurudev told all the new initiates. You are not different from the pure Vaishnavas and Brahmanas. Therefore, you can give me whatever they can give me. You can give me Prema Bhakti, you can give me Kamapika Bhakti, and you can take away all my anartas, all my impediments. So, Krishna Prashadam is not different from Krishna, unlimited. So the supply was never finished. And in the meantime, what was happening to the fruit seller? Completely without her heart, without her mind, forgetting who she was, where she was, only remembering Krishna, because now her heart was with Krishna, in Krishna. So finally the hours were passing, she wasn't going home, and somebody came to her and said, excuse me, aren't you supposed to be going home? What are you doing here? Then she remembered, oh yes, Mathura. So she took her fruits, fruit basket, put it on her head, and as she was walking, she came near the Jamuna, and she realized that this basket is getting very heavy. So she took it off her head to see what it was, and she saw that the whole basket was now full of diamonds and rubies and pearls and other jewels. So she put the basket back on her head, tossed it way into the Jamuna, because she had no need for these insignificant things. When one gives to Krishna everything he has, then Krishna gives everything he has, which is his whole self. So in trance, she went off, and Gurudev said, where she went, nobody knows. She was in trance and more than trance. Gurudev said, perhaps Krishna took her body at that very moment, took the outer shell, and took her to go look over Vrindavan. She was in Shantarati, like no relationship, 
But because Krishna saw her as something like a mother, he gave her position more than Kubja, more than Putana, a position very close to his heart in Goloka Vrindavan. So, so many lessons in this very beautiful Leela. Gaur Premanandi Hari Hari. Then Gurudev quoted the prayers 
of the Nagapatnis. They prayed Kasanu Bhava Asyana Deva Vidmihi Tvadangri Renu Sparsa Dikara Yad Manchaya Sri Lanat Ajara Tathapo Bihaya Kamanya Suchinya Dhritta Brata They asked, we don't know what good activities that Kalya performed that he could get the touch of the feet dust of Krishna upon his head because Vansri that Vansriya Sri Lanat Ajara Tathapo because even Lakshmi, the goddess of fortune, performed austerities for a very long time, but she could not achieve the food dust of Krishna. Therefore, Sri Sanatana Goswami has explained, in his previous life, Kaliya was a king, and there was some drought in his kingdom. Therefore, he took advice from the Brahmanas who said, O oh king, any problem in the kingdom is the fault of the king. Therefore, the king can become sinless, then rain will come. So they went to worship one sadhu. That sadhu, that sadhu was living in one tree hop. So Kalya came to worship him. And when we greet a sadhu, first we wash their feet. So that sadhu, he put his feet outside. And Kalya saw that sadhu had leprosy. But what to do now? He washed the feet of the sadhu. Then you have to drink that foot bathing water. That is very, very powerful. Vaishna Padaduli, Vaishna Padajal, Vaishna Bukta Avashishna, 18 Saranbal. But he could not drink the water because this had blood, bits of skin, leprosy. Therefore, he was afraid to drink it. Therefore, he put it on his head. That sadhu said, Oh, you have no faith in me. You are like a snake. Because a snake is very nice outside, but inside full of poison. Actually, you have no regards for the sadhu. As Rupa Goswami said, Brahma Dhamagata Itikachita Niragarmi. Even sadhu has some fault, some disease, some rough behavior, some low birth. It does not matter. He is still completely transcendental, just like the Ganga. So the sadhu cursed him, become a snake. But then Kaliya began and the sadhu said, but at least you put it on your head, so I bless you. The Supreme Lord Sri Krishna will dance on you. Therefore Kaliya, he took birth as a snake and he had a great enmity with Garuda. Garuda used to come and eat snakes here and there. Therefore snakes would give an offering every 15 days for Garuda. But Kaliya was envious of Garuda, therefore he used to eat the offering before Garuda would come. Therefore Garuda beat him with his wings and Kaliya was suffering very much and Kaliya ran towards Vrindavan. There was one lake to the side of the main current of the Yamuna and that place Garuda could not go because one Subhari Rishi had cursed him. O oh, Garuda, if you come here, your head will crack to a thousand pieces. Therefore, Kali was living there, and he was so much on one island. In that island was many holes, and Kali and his wife were living on that island. So when Sri Krishna jumped in the Yamuna, then so many big waves came, and those waves went in the hole of Kali. Actually, without the grace of the punishment of Garuda, then Kaliya also cannot have the good fortune to meet Krishna. Kaliya thought, Garuda is my enemy, but a sadhu is a jata satru, a dosa darshi. A sadhu never thinks anyone is my enemy. Never, even though Kaliya met ill for Garuda, Garuda met only good fortune for him. Therefore, another reason of Kaliya receiving the mercy of Sri Krishna was the punishment of Garuda. And the sadhu's punishment is their blessing. Sadhu never does anything which is inauspicious for anyone. So when Krishna jumped in, so many high waves came. And those um, went in the hole of Kaliya. Then Kali became very angry and he came out and he, he challenged Krishna. What did he see? Tat prekshani, tat prekshani, sukumana, gana, ganadvam. 
Srimad Sapita Basanam Smita Sundarasyam. He saw how beautiful is Krishna's form. Kriditam Apatibayam. Kriditam Apatibayam. Komaloda Angri. Sandasa Mormo Sabuja Rusa Chadai. Krishna's beautiful form, Ganaganatvam, like a dark, more beautiful than millions and millions of rain clouds. Susmitasyan, with a very nice smile. Sri Vatsapita Basanam, with yellow cloth and huts around his neck. Very beautiful lotus feet. But when Kaliya saw him, he ecstasy love, he thought, I will kill him. Even though many demons saw Krishna when he spoke Bhagavad Gita, they could not understand Krishna because they had no devotion. Krishna says, Arjuna, I am only understood by Bhakti. Therefore, Kali grabbed, he tried to bite Krishna, he grabbed Krishna and pressed him in his coils. That time, the Brijabhasis, they felt many inauspicious symptoms, some quivering of the left side of the body, some cows crying, some birds making disturbance. The Brijabhasis thought, oh, something has happened to Krishna. Therefore all ran towards the cup. And there they saw their Kanaya in the grips of Kalya. Mahmoda and the Brijabhasis, they wanted to enter into the river of Yamuna. It may be Yasoda is thinking, oh Kalya, Krishna is only very small. He is not even one mouthful. Take me, take us, if you release Krishna. But Baladev, he is Guru Tattva, the protector of all bridge bases. Therefore, Balaram, with his arms, he stopped everyone. Don't, don't. You don't know the power of my brother. So Krishna was like that for 48 minutes, I think. Then all the gopis were crying. Some gopis were unconscious. And as they were unconscious, they were remembering Krishna. Then Krishna said, now I will give punishment to Kaliya. Deva Krishna began dancing on the head of Kaliya now. So one poet has says, Tanmayam gati mandal padana chadagiri dhari Pam 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 paga patakara pan 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 panat kari Bim 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 kari naga vadu hari Viga 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 vidya dana dam 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 deva sakala gan 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 dhavika dana chatate tare Sa 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 na ka di ke na 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 ni ke ma 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 ha de ba bam bam bali ha di so das papa ke mani kim kim ne ke na jani dan 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 chana na paka ta nir boy boy ha di thanda gati mandan thora na so so much so much was described he made he danced on the head of Kali how just like we saw this girl doing varan nakim. Pam 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 paga patakara. With his feet, Krishna was making some nice rhythm. Pam 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 panakari. And from one pam, pam means head. Head to another head to another head. And chaka chaka chaka. Cha. And then Kali would go. Ah. He would stomp on the head of Kali. That time, the musicians, like the Vidyadaras, they were trying to keep up with Krishna's dancing because they know of music in the Vedas. But Krishna is outside the Veda. Therefore the rhythms that Krishna would all oh, the Vidyadadas, they could not do anything. They threw away their Madangas, Naj the Tehatari. They only clapping their hands. That time big big sadhus like Sasasana Kadike Nana Nanana Munike Mahadev Bam Bam Bori Hari Ma Nara Muni Mahadev Hari Bol, Hari Bol. They saw Krishna's wonderful dancing. Dun, dun, isn't it? Then Surda says, Who can describe completely the dancing of Sri Krishna on the head of Kaliya? By putting his foot stamp on the head of Kaliya, he took away all his fear. Tandav Gati Mandan Parana to the Girid Hari. All glories to that Girid Hari Krishna. So that time Krishna, he may be showing, oh, to the gopis. How much I can dance on the head of a snake, imagine how much I will dance nicely with you in Ras Lila in the future. So when Krishna would stomp his foot, pa, then Kaliya would feel the weight of the Lord, his head would be crushed. So he was bleeding, vomiting blood, vomiting poison, vomit, 
his eyes were weeping, when all his poison was outside, then he looked at Krishna and then he could understand Krishna. You know, a little bit. This is not any boy, this is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Just like we are full of anatas, full of poison, and how we can see Gurudev, how we can see the Vaishnavas, how we can see the deity, Mahaprasad, because we are full of unwanted things. So the Chimakarma said, you want to embrace Krishna, but you are covered in stool. So first clean yourself, then embrace Krishna. So when all the poison was out of Kalya, then he could little understand Sri Krishna. In his mind, he surrendered at the feet of the Lord. That time, the Nagapatnis, the wife of Kalya, they approached Krishna and they offered prayers. Kalya had been living there so long time. Because of the mercy of Yamuna, because of the association of his wives, who were pure devotees, then some surrender came to the feet of Krishna. Oh Krishna, please don't kill me. Four types of persons approach to Krishna. One of them is fear. So Kalya surrendered to Krishna. And the wives offered many wonderful prayers. Time there, so I don't know. Time is not. They said, Oh Krishna, you are very, very merciful. Therefore, your punishment is an act of great mercy. Just like if Gurudev punishes someone, we should not think Gurudev is cruel or he doesn't love that person. This is an act of great mercy. Oh Krishna, your Pandit Kalya is very kind. Even Lakshmi could not get your foot dust, but you gave to this serpent. Therefore they prayed so much. Nana kaprestam, na chasauva baumam, na paramestam, na rasadi patyam, na yogisidim apuna bhavancha. Banchita ye pararoje prapam. Oh Krishna, anyone who even does pranam to your foot dust, who speak of getting foot dust on your head, vanchaye pararaj prapana, who only does pranam to your foot dust, that person becomes so exalted. Nanaka prestam natasa. They are not interested in this whole earth planet. They are not natcha. They are not interested in the heavenly planets up to Lord Brahma. Nachara Sadi Patyam. They are not interested in the, even the lower heavenly planets like Rasatal. Na Yogi Siddhima Puna Bhuvamscha. They are not interested even in liberation from birth and death. Such is the greatness of that person who achieves, who just does pranam to you who does. So much tattva siddhanta they pray to Krishna. Oh Krishna, you are time. You are the witness of time. You are the shelter of time. You are this creation. You are also the creator. We offer our pranams to you and to Sankarsan, Prajumna, Aniruddha. So many prayers. And finally, please be kind on our husband who has surrendered to you. Then Kalya, he became a little inspired. But his prayer is a little funny. He prayed, Oh Krishna, out of all species of life, the snake is the most envious. And you have created everyone. No one can act against their nature. They will plead me and give me another body. So his prayer also, little. Uh, so then Krishna said, Oh Kalya, you are my devotee, but you cannot stay in Vrindavan because you will make everything so much poisonous. Therefore, go to Fiji with your wives, yes. Raman Dweep, Ramana Dweep, and he went there with the punches. <laughs> he went there and lived there, and he also an example of someone who got the mercy of Sri Krishna. So we are also like small Kaliyas, only I have one head, but we are poison. Kalya represents envy. So until Gurudev or his represent, pam 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 pa da kata kata, till Gurudev or Bhagavan dance up, our natas will not go out also. Therefore, Mancha Kapa to the best child, the person will be able to help you. Kali has done that 
even Brahma, Shankar, demigods, even Lakshmi, Shivans, they want all that Krishna should put up his feet on our heads, but they have never so chance. So how, Kali? Say, Vishwanath Shavarti Thakur and others, they have described how, why it can so, Kali and Nag, Nag is so fortunate. Oh, he was from Vindavan, he was about seven or eight yugs. Huh? Twenty chatur yuk. Twenty chatur yuk. So long time. If anyone, one night, even he will be in Vrindavan, Prajamandal, or Mathura. Krishna Bhakti Prajayati. Diva. Diva. Prajayati. So Bhakti. And he is long, long time here. Also, we should know that if any man, <coughs> any man, enemy is any sadhu purush, devotee of Krishna, even enemy is better than a friend who is materialistic. So, <coughs> by Garud, Garud was not thinking, he was Ajat Satru because he is devotee. But Kali always thought that he is my enemy. But he was not enemy. He always desired that Kali should anyhow be liberated and he should be a good devotee of Krishna. So by his mercy, oh, Krishna put his head, his feet on his head. Also, due to the chasticity of his wife, his wife stole thought that now Kali has become devotee. He has taken surrender of Krishna. So now he is, he is devotee. And we are also devotee. We want that our husband should not be killed. If he will be killed, then other snakes will come and forcibly they will test it. So, they prayed that, oh, we want that you should give up our husband and we will both oh, serve you. In this way, so many regions were there. Now, one day Krishna, grazing cops, he went near Talwan. Where? Tall trees? Palm, palm, palm forest. Ah, palm forest. And very beautiful, sweet fruits were there. So, the boys told, they asked Baldev Prabhu, Oh, we want to take the very sweet fruit of Talman. We are very hungry. And what was done after that? Chaitanya Maharaj will speak in brief. Guru Vay Gaura Chanda Tikaya Taralaya Krishna Krishna Bhaktaya Taravantaya Navana Maha. I first of all offer millions and millions of Dhanavan Pranams unto the lotus feet of my beloved Gurudev. Om Vishnu Pad, Paramaham Sapuri Rajaka Charja, Astol Tadasara Shishi Mad, Srila Bhakti Vedanta Narayan Goswami Maharaj. And unto all the Sridandi Sanyas Gyan, 
and all the Vaishnav, Vaishnavi devotees of the Lord, Dandavat Pranams. So Srila Gurudev, this evening, is taking us all to Sri Vrindavan Dham and the beautiful, exceptional, astonishing pastimes of Krishna in his early childhood pastimes. So Srila Gurudev described that after the Gopastam festival, that Krishna, he took the cows grazing, all cow calves grazing with all the boys. And in this chapter, in the 10th canto of the killing of Denukasura, it begins with Krishna wandering in the beautiful forest of Vrindavan. And it's described how Krishna's eyes were seeing the beauty of Vrindavan and his ears were hearing the beautiful humming of the bumblebees and his tongue was tasting the fresh sweet water of the bubbling streams and creeks and the wind the beautiful soft breeze was touching his skin so all of his senses were being completely satisfied by the beauty and sweetness of Sri Vrindavan his, his nose was smelling the fragrance of the beautiful flowers and then Krishna he began to glorify his wonderful brother Baladev Prabhu and he was saying how the trees are bowing over in honor of him how the fruits are being given from the trees how the flowers are blooming and blossoming it's all happening due to Krishna's presence but Krishna was glorifying his brother of Vrindavan and then they were playing so many games with the cowherd and at that time Subal, Mangal, Sri, they approached Krishna and they were saying oh hungry actually actually of course they weren't hungry at all they were just wanting to perform a very beautiful special pastime so they were saying oh you please be a hero and kill this hunger. The Saka, he likes to inspire Viraras, this sugary mood. So the Sakas were inspiring Krishna and Balaram to satisfy their hunger and they were smelling the aroma of these very special Tao fruits. It's described that these Tao fruits were like dark like honeybees and they were very juicy and fat and their scent and their aroma was very intoxicating and inviting and this aroma was going through this beautiful forest of Talwan so they challenged Krishna to please go to this forest of the Tao fruits and give us these Tao fruits we're so hungry so this forest was actually under the control of Kamsa this or the fruits were being taken to the palace of Kamsa and it's described that there was a great demon residing in that forest called Denukasura. And Denukasura had actually eaten men. He'd actually, they caught birds. Even birds wouldn't fly over. They felt it was such a dangerous forest to go to. But then nevertheless, Krishna and Balra and all the cowherd boys, very courageously, they walked straight into that forest. And Baladev Prabhu at that time, he took the initiative, the lead, and he went to one Tao tree and he began to shake it very ferociously. And all the Tao fruits, they began to pound on the ground, making a big noise. And immediately at that time, Denukasura, he came rushing out, braying madly. He was an ass demon, like half horse, half ass. And he came braying out with his teeth crashing together and his hoofs, very sharp hoofs, stamping on the ground and he swung round with his back to Baladev and he kicked both his hind legs in the chest of Baladev. But Baladev, he just ignored that as if some flower had been thrown against his chest. He took no notice of it at all. And then the demon ran around and round in circles, braying and braying. And then he turned round again to take another ferocious kick at the chest of Baladev. This time, Baladev Peru, he caught that demon Dana Kusura's legs and he swung that demon around his head until the centrifugal force of that swinging took his life and he swung that demon up into the high trees, these high tall trees 
and one by one, as that demon hit the first tree, then the second tree crashed, and then that caused a whole domino effect of all the different trees dropping down. So many trees were crashed by the, the weight of that one demon. And then all of Den Nukasura's um, compatriots, all of his followers, they all came rushing out, angry that their leader, Denokasura, had been so easily killed by this young cowherd boy. And then Krishna and Balaram together, they began the most amazing pastime. Both of them were catching these demon, ass demons, by the hind legs and swirling them around and around and around and throwing them into the tau trees. And all the tau trees were just crashing down along with the fruits. So it's, at this time it's described that the fruits were actually spoiled because there was so much blood from all the demons over them and actually later on the Pulinda, the tribes women, they came and took those fruits. But this demon, who is the first demon that Baladev Prabhu slays, is actually the representation of ignorance. An ass is like an ignorant creature. He just carries such a weight of washing and load and just takes a little bit of grass in payment for what he's carrying. So this signifies the slaying by Baladev Prabhu, who's the embodiment of Guru Tattva. He slays this anarta of ignorance. There's a very beautiful verse, Maya Bhuddhasya Jivasya Neonata Chatu Vidu Hridai Dubalyam Chaparad Satrishna Tattva Vibrama this is saying the four types of anartas that represent ignorance. This ignorance is the root of our sinful life. When this ignorance becomes purified, then our sinful activity will subside, will stop. So these four anartas, this Kridai uh, Dubalyam, this envy of other people, this um, uh, Pratishta, this wanting to have more fame than Krishna, wanting to put ourselves in the spotlight rather than trying to illuminate the beauty and glories of the Supreme Lord Himself. Thank so, you. Baldev Prabhu, oh, he takes all kinds of ignorance and he gives Krishna Tattva and Prima Bhakti. Now, one day, Krishna was grazing cows with, now he, he, he was grazing cops nearby, anywhere. Govardhan Hill or anywhere and he saw that on the hill so many cows are there giving up their new coughs and they are hankering after and running after their old coughs. Well, they probably thought, why have these things? So in, he will speak more about this story. <coughs> but very brief because I am tiny. Om Jnana Timirandasya Jnana Jnana Shalaya Chakshurun Militam Jena Tasmai Shri Guru Namaha So we are so fortunate that we have been brought to Sri Dam by our beloved Srila Gurudev and hearing for these past week all these beautiful pastimes of Srimad Bhagavatam and Sri Vrindavan Dam. So Srila Gurudev has brought us up to the 14th chapter of the 10th canto of Srimad Bhagavatam. And now the most amazing story, which is called Brahma Vimohan Lila, is narrated by Shukadev Goswami. As Srila Gurudev told, one day 
huh? Krishna or Baladev Prabhu, he was noticing that uh, the calves that were being grazed by Krishna, that there were cows, the, the, the mother cows, they were running down the hill and showing so much affection to their calves. Uh, and he also noticed that the cowherd men So Baladev Prabhu was noticing that the cowherd men were showing so much and he noticed that their affection for, their, for the sons and the cow's affection for their calves, even though the calves were grown-up calves by now, one year old, that they were extremely affectionate to them as they are for Krishna. Because all the bridge bossies in Vrindavan, they love Krishna more than they love their own sons. The cows love Krishna more than they love their own calves. So then, Baladev Prabhu inquired from Krishna about the reason for this, uh, and he came to understand that this was the mystic power of his younger brother Krishna. But there is a very great secret behind this, and this story is now explained by Shukadev Goswami, why this was so. So, Lord Brahma, who is the supreme creator of this universe, uh, Lord Brahma noticed Krishna's pastimes in Vrindavan, when specifically there was the killing of the snake demon, Aghasur, who had expanded himself as a huge snake. And when he saw Krishna rescue the coward boys from the belly of this snake, and he had killed the snake demon. Then he saw that the Atma of uh, Agasur entered into the lotus feet of Krishna. So Lord Brahma, he was very attracted to this and he desired to see more sweet pastimes of Krishna. So therefore, an inspiration came into his heart. Uh, and also he began to use his intelligence, his own intelligence, and therefore now he was watching Krishna one day when Krishna went to the bank of the Jamuna River herding the, the young calves and with all of his cowherd boyfriends who were very young like Krishna, only five years old. So when Krishna and the cowherd boys were going along the bank of the Jamuna, they saw a very nice place where there was an extensive place of sand where they could all sit down together and they could enjoy their lunch together. So every day, whenever Krishna would leave for the forest of Vrindavan along with his cowherd boyfriends, they would carry lunch bags which their mothers had made for them. So at this place in the forest, where there were beautiful grasses nearby, very nice shady trees, so Krishna sat, told his cowherd boyfriends, let us sit here and let us take our lunch here. So now all the cowherd boys who were very happily playing with Krishna, and Krishna was their very life and soul, now they all sat down. Krishna sat down in one place, and the cowherd boys sat down in lines surrounding Krishna in various rows, uh, hundreds and thousands of cowherd boys. And uh, they all brought out their lunches and placed them on sometimes leaves, some on top, on top of rocks, they took out all the foodstuffs that were packed, they put them on flowers, and in this way, very happily, they were playing uh, together and taking lunch with Krishna. All the, each cowherd boy was actually looking at Krishna, although they were a distance away from Krishna even, but by Krishna's transcendental potency, because he is the supreme absolute who is the center of the entire creation. Therefore, Krishna showed each cowherd boy that he was looking directly at them and reciprocating with them, eye to eye. So, in this way, all the cowherd boys were playing together very happily, taking their foodstuffs, 
And they were also sometimes tasting the foodstuffs of one another. And the cowherd boys were so intimately praying with such sakura, such friendship, uh, that they would even take food out of their own mouths and give it to another cowherd boy. Here, taste this. This is so wonderful. And sometimes they would even joke and laugh. And one cowherd boy, he would take a samosa that had been made by his mother and he would take out the ingredients from inside of the samosa and he would put a flower inside of there and then it's flower in this and then he would give it to another cowherd boy and he'd say oh taste this this is very wonderful so then the cowherd boy would bite on it and he would and he would taste oh very bitter and make a funny face and then that cowherd boy would laugh and in this way so much joking and exchanging was going on between them so as this was going on and Krishna was enjoying with the cowherd boys, oh, at that time they noticed that the calves had strayed very far distance away. They couldn't see them anymore. And then the cowherd boys wanted to go and bring them, but Krishna told them, oh no, no, you should stay here. I will go and bring them. And very shortly I will return. So now Krishna left that place uh, and he went looking for the calves. In the meantime, Lord Brahma, who was overlooking this whole scene, he now thought, oh, let me test Krishna. So he took those calves which had been wandering by his mystic power, and he took them into a cave. He placed them inside of a cave near the Jamuna River, and he hid them there. And he placed them in a kind of mystic sleep. So now Krishna, who was looking everywhere, he could not find the calves. And then he returned back to the place where the cowherd boys had been sitting. And then when he came back to that place, he also saw that the cowherd boys were not there. Why? Because Brahma had also taken the cowherd boys and placed them into that cave. So now Krishna was thinking, oh, oh, I can understand that this is Brahma who is trying to test me. And he also, in his Naravat Leela, he was thinking, how can I go back to the village of Vrindavan without the calves and without the cowherd boys? Oh, Mother Yashoda will be very upset with me. So then Krishna, by his transcendental supreme potency, Sri Krishna himself expanded himself as every single cowherd boy. He became identically each cowherd boy with their particular facial features, their particular dress, the shapes of their hands, their eyes, their voices, their personalities. He became each and every calf also, expanded himself as each calf. And in this way, now Krishna went with all the calves and the cowherd boys, continued his pastimes in the forest of Vrindavan, and then, at the end of the day, Krishna now went uh, into the village of Vrindavan and he went back to his home and when he came back and all the village people of Vrindavan were waiting for Krishna to come home with all the cowherd boys and the calves, now they all saw Krishna and, and they saw the cowherd boys and the calves and they became completely overwhelmed with love and affection for their cowherd boys. So now Krishna, in the form of every cowherd boy, he entered into every house in Vrindavan. And also as the calf, he entered into the cow sheds. And now, in this form, all the elderly gopis of Vrindavan and cowherd men who really loved Krishna more than they loved their own sons, and they always wanted, they always desired, oh, if we could only have Krishna as our son, like Mother Yashoda has him. So now Krishna fulfilled their desire, and he personally became their sons. They were able to bathe him, to feed him, to dress him, to decorate him. And all the mother cows, who also loved Krishna more than they loved their calves, now those cows were able to personally give milk from their own milk bags and personally, personally uh, lick the bodies of their calves. And in this way, Krishna satisfied their desire. So, in this way, for one whole year, 
Krishna continued every day performing his pastimes, going into the forest of Vrindavan with the calves and cowherd boys, coming home at night, going into all the homes. During this one year also, there was a proclamation by Bhagwati Rishi, Purnamasi Devi. Purnamasi Devi was always revered by all the Brijabhasis. They followed every one of her orders. And she told them that this year is the most auspicious time for marrying all the young cowherd girls uh, to the young cowherd boys. Because in the Vedic times, they would be married very young. They would not live together, but they would be married together and they would grow up knowing that, oh, he is my husband, she is my wife. So, they, they, so all the young cowherd girls married the young cowherd boys. And in this way, Krishna fulfilled the desire of the young cowherd girls to have Krishna as their dearly beloved. So like this, during this one year, Lord Brahma, in the meantime, because his time period is very long compared to earthly time, uh, one moment of his time is one entire year of earthly time. So during the time after he had stolen the calves and cowherd boys, put them in the cave, then Lord Brahma, he returned back to his abode in Brahmalok. And when he came there, he wanted to enter into the palace of Brahmalok. But the guards in the gateway, they prevented him from entering. And they said, no, no, you cannot enter here. He said, why? I am Lord Brahma, I am your master. He said, no, 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 you are only an imposter. Our, our master is inside the palace. And he has told us that an imposter, he will come here saying, I am Lord Brahma. We should not let him enter. So who was that other Lord Brahma in Brahmaji's palace? That was Krishna himself who expanded himself as Brahma. Now Brahma began to think, oh, I am being defeated. Something is not in order here. So he went immediately, within that same moment that he returned back, he immediately came back to the earthly planet. And when he came back to the earthly planet, he went to the same place on the bank of the Jamuna to look where the calves and the coward boys were. When he came there, he saw that they were still there. He saw that all the coward boys were sitting just as before he stolen them. They were sitting there taking their lunch with Krishna very happily. And he saw all the calves nearby grazing. So then Lord Brahma thought, oh, what is happening here? And immediately he went to the other place where he had put the original cowherd boys in the cave. And when he went there, he saw they were also in the cave. And then he went back to the place on the bank of the Jamun and he saw that they were simultaneously there. And because he has four heads, he's able to look simultaneously in all directions. He looked in both places simultaneously and he saw they were both there. So now he realized, uh-oh, I have made a mistake. Oh, now I have seen that Krishna's mystic power, oh, it is so far superior to my mystic power. And then, at that time, Lord Brahma began to feel in his heart repentance for trying to test Krishna's mystic power. And he, at that time, could the, he was able to get the vision. Krishna allowed him to see that every single cowherd boy and every calf, they now manifested in front of Brahmaji's eyes as very beautiful Vishnu forms with four arms, uh, holding conch shell, disc, flower and club, lotus flower and club. And they were so beautifully decorated with golden ornaments. He saw that these powerful Vishnu forms were actually manifested in all directions and he began to see all the demigods, all the different manifestations of the universe, taking forms and praising these Vishnu forms, offering prayers to them. And now Lord Brahma became completely overwhelmed. Even though he is the supreme creator of this material world, he became completely overwhelmed by Krishna's mystic power. And now he began to uh, repent. So, Brahmaji at this time, he immediately uh, came to Krishna when Krishna was going in the forest just nearby to that place. 
and he came and he fell down at Krishna's lotus feet and he paid his obeisances. He came there on his swan carrier. And when he came and paid his obeisances at Krishna's lotus feet, now he stood up and his big powerful form with golden crowns on his head and tears rolling from his eyes. Now Lord Brahma, he began to offer prayers to Krishna. And these prayers are called Brahma Studi. Hmm? Okay. So in the beginning, Lord Brahma told oh, that no Mindyate Brahma oh, uh, Brahma Bhushe. Yes. He told that, oh, you are so beautifully standing in front of me as a beautiful cowherd boy. You are decorated with Gunjamala and golden cloth like lightning. Your beautiful body resembles like a dark rain cloud. And your earrings are beautifully decorating your beautiful lotus face. Oh, how beautiful you are appearing before me as a cowherd boy. But yet I understand that you are actually the supreme absolute truth, the supreme controller of this entire universe. And in comparison with your mystic power, my powers are simply like a little firefly in comparison with the sun. Uh, and your glories are so great that even the greatest philosophers and scientists, if they are able to count the atomic particles in the sun rays, they will still never be able to count the extent of your great glories. He said, no one can understand you, but only by the process. And he said, Jnane prayasam udapasyana manta eva jivanti sanmukaritam bhavadiya vartam stane stita shudigatam tanuvan mano bir Ye prae so jita jitopya si taistri lokyam He said only if someone gives up this attempt to understand you Jnane prayasam they try to understand you with their intelligence, with their brain. Huh? And they simply surrender at your lotus feet. And they continue the process of hearing about you from the 